Hello class. This is the time cycle. This is our last context, number four for the Hopewell site, and this is preservation. So Hopewell mounds in the past, as you know by now, the Hopewell mound system once reached across the states. It included the burial mounds, ceremonial mounds, and mounds as large as the Great Pyramids of Egypt. And it also included the largest pre-colonization city in North America. It was a great civilization. Some of them remain, like our Serpent Mound friend over here on the right, but a whole lot more have been lost. And the mounds have disappeared over time, both due to natural and human action. They've been looted for artifacts, but sometimes the mounds themselves remain, they're just emptied. And the roads and paths that were used too have been obscured, but with modern technology like LIDAR, you can still see them. And over on the right are some LIDAR images of, you can see mounds and roads and circles and things that are not really visible. They're not really visible from the air or from the ground. So what happened to them? Most of the mounds were destroyed by agriculture. And this really began with the colonization of the Midwest when they allowed people to go into Ohio and onward. And people started building their farms and leveling the mounds to have flat lands. Native Americans left the mounds alone. They were sacred spaces or special spaces, and they respected them. Um, when industrial farming happened, when farms kind of evolved from being single-family farms to being huge factory-type farms, that really did the mounds in because they just flattened everything. Also, road building, like the interstate system, infrastructure, which is building things like watersheds and the like for major cities, and then, of course, housing developments, they all leveled mounds, too. And then some remaining structures were leased by the government to private factors, being private organizations, to become things like golf courses. And over on the right, you see one of Hopewell's famous sites that includes the octagon site. You can see this over here. And this is a picture from the air showing the diagrams of the mounds and the land lines. And this whole section of the octagon site was turned into a golf course. Yep. And some were relocated. This is an example where to build a stadium and parking areas. And before that, even during the 19th century, which would be the 1800s, they moved all of these mounds. They were all removed. So how these things are being preserved, if the mound is on government land, it's protected as far as if it is government land along the lines of a national forest or park or historical site or nature preserve. If it's on government land that's designated for something else, sometimes not. Then the Native American get Grave Protection and Reprot Act protects mounds on some private lands and all tribal lands. And that overlaps because some tribes, when they were relocated to reservations, ended up on land that another tribe has artifacts on. But that act encompasses all tribal lands, whether they're now reservation lands or whether they are historical tribal lands, like most of Oklahoma. Mounds on private property are still subject to use by landowners as long as the content isn't disturbed. So if you have a Native American mound on your property, you can use it. You could run a herd on it. You could even plant it. 
but you can't dig it up and you can't make it flat. And then whenever possible, a private or state preservation group will purchase or lease the lands that mounds are on. I have a mound on my property. I could let my cows walk on it or try to plant tomatoes on it. Or I could do nothing and just let the government give me money so that I to make sure that I don't do anything to it. And technically that mound is their property and I'll put a fence around it and nobody will mess with it. So in order to preserve and call attention to this, the Hopewell Culture National Historical Park has been recommended to be a World Heritage Site. It has not been approved yet. It's kind of um, got backburnered due to COVID. But what that would mean, it would be a big thing. The site would be preserved, protected, and studied. Uh, there would be an importance given to it that would be recognized around the world. For example, other World Heritage Sites include things like the Great Wall of China, the Pyramids, the Great Barrier Reef. They can be natural things like the Great Barrier Reef as well as man-made artifacts. So why is this important? It's because Hopewell is important to remember. And this is a big deal because it's part of the mostly forgotten history of our country. For a long time in schools, the history of North America began with European colonization. There was a brief mention of Native Americans, but they were kind of like the backdrop char characters to the whole colonist and pilgrims and all of that. And they were presented mostly as savages. And any artifacts and buildings and earthworks that were found here, they were for a long time attributed to other people. They thought that Native Americans couldn't possibly have invented this stuff on their own. They thought they were from long lost tribes from Israel. They thought they were for forgotten European voyages, or even Nephilim, which is a race of giants, or today alien astronauts. And a lot of that came from the fact that when people were starting to really study or view the Native Americans, the colonists, they were viewing people that were what's referred to in history as people in trauma because their living spaces have been invaded by things that they have no idea about you know think horses guns the military the way it was organized and they were displaced plus the diseases it was a very difficult time, and so they were not appearing as having it together enough to build these big kind of civilizations. And they thought they were always like that when, in fact, it was not true. It was an effect. And here is Moonrise over the one of the Hopewell line structures. So the truth is, is long before there was colonization, North America had a land of complex civilizations that created works of art, they discovered technology, they developed complex systems of navigation, including astrology and government and belief, they built cities and earthworks and had a lot more. It is theorized that if Columbus or whoever would have arrived 50 years later, things would be very much different because of the way the technology was beginning to evolve very quickly. And truth be told, you know, I've been to college a lot. I've been all over the country a lot, all the continental U.S., every single state. And you guys know that I'm a very curious person. But I didn't know hardly anything about this before this lesson and researching this. I knew that 
there was such a thing as Native American mounds. I knew there were woodland Indians, but I did not understand how vast and complex this whole society was and how cool it is. Okay. And even though when I drive across country all the time, I see signs for mounds and like my sister living by the mound, I was curious about it, but I never really stopped. I never really thought they were connected to each other. I just thought they were random mounds in random places. But now that I know all this, I'm really looking forward to hopefully this summer getting to explore some of these. I'm planning on a cross country trip this summer and I wish I could take you all with me because we go see some really super cool things, COVID or not. Most of these things are not highly populated. So anyway, I'm quite excited about the whole adventure now. And so these are just some of the signs that I know I have passed across. I've driven all over this area. I have passed Kalukia. That's where that great big city was. I have passed the Itoa Mounds. And there's a whole lot out there that we just don't pay attention to that is so super cool. Anyway, your assignment. You just need your Chromebook for this. You're going to read through the list of what it takes to be a World Heritage Site. And I will show you that site. It's also linked. And I'm asking you these questions, which one or more of these qualifications does Hopewell fit? And tell me why and turn in a Google Doc. So let's leave our presentation and you are going to the site. Um, ignore the little chat box. And you're going to explore this. There's some little blurb and then here are how the sites are added to the list. This is some of the things that they may need to be a site. It can only be one of these or it can be many of them. So read through them and tell me which ones you think fit. And you can just tell me by the number. You don't have to write the whole thing down. Tell me which ones you think fit Hopewell and why and maybe it'll come true. That's it.